Hello, hello. Welcome to the All In Podcast with your host, Nate Payo. I'm Nate Payo. Uh, today's episode, we have a guest that I met from a Facebook group page called Unconventional Leaders. Our guest is Katie Harrell. Katie uh, had posted on the group page that she was looking to get started in real estate investing. And we chatted briefly through the through the messenger app and decided to get on a phone call, talk a little bit more depth, give her some tips and, and advice from somebody that's been in, in commercial real estate investing for a lot of times. But I think a lot of the tips and knowledge when you're looking at financial deals uh, stays the same. It's just on a smaller scale. So we got to talking about getting started in podcast. She's got her own podcast uh, going on out there. And then we jumped into some real estate investing tips and advice. So I think you get a lot of value out of it. I know I sure did. But it really goes to show you just when you have an open mind of who you're going to meet, you never know where it can take you and the relationships you'll make, the connections you'll make. And if you're open-minded, it's going to take you a lot of fun places and you're going to meet a lot of wonderful, great people. And I sure did. So go ahead, take a look, uh, take a listen to this uh, podcast. Let me know what you think. Thanks. Want to go far in business and in life? You can't do it alone. The secret is expanding your network of personal relationships, building friendships, connecting on an intimate level, away from the office, over a coffee or cocktail. Welcome to All In with Nate Payo. The show that asks what happens when you go all in and leverage the power of your network of personal relationships. Yes, absolutely. So you're all getting right. into podcasting then. That's pretty cool. What are you, have you already laid out your show? Are you um, kind of figuring that out right now? It's a work in progress. I've had a few people on the show and recorded it. Like it started off, um, the idea behind it was like, like I was, I was advising some small businesses and stuff like that. And, and I would coach them and we'd meet like, for like a beer or a coffee and we talked for like an hour about what they had going on and what they were working on and I was always right. like at the end of it I was like that was like really good information I think people would find some value in hearing that and I thought it was interesting so I've had this idea for like a few years um of like recording it and documenting yeah. it but I never yeah. had like the I guess the guts to to do it until like about three months ago and I decided I was going to do more and, and be out there more. And yeah. so it, it evolved into this idea. And it's still kind of like in flux, but for the most part, like it's going to be that general dynamic. But there's other topics I want to cover too, like um, just kind of like stuff I deal with personally that, that I've shared with other people that they've found like inspiration from. So I'm like, I don't want to be too narrow and just say it's only about like business coaching and consulting and networking, but also about other right. things too and it could be anything so i just find meeting people fascinating and whatever like the, wherever the conversation goes it goes and whatever we talk about we talk about and and just see what happens so that's that's kind of it in a nutshell wow i love that that's really exciting that you kind of are like wow you know i want to take this and then create something from these conversations because you're right i mean when you obviously network a lot and as do i and one thing that's really cool is sometimes you'll have these conversations and you leave and you're like oh my gosh i really do wish that i had a full notebook of notes or that recorded because there's so much value in just getting to know people and networking that you never know that conversation might really have an impact on somebody so I commend you bravery for doing that because that's that that it really does take a lot of courage to to do to do that so that's amazing yeah, well, I'm excited what, to, to hear your podcast and everything well thank you what's your what's your podcast going to be about or have you done it yet Started yes it? yes yeah I've already been podcasting for about two years um I, I'm, I'm kind of similar in a sense. I do my, my podcast called The BS Detox, and I've interviewed all types of people from um, musicians to artists, poets, um, businessmen and women, um, weight loss journeys. I, I kind of I love it all. I really do love just connecting to people and seeing what in their life kind of inspires them to create their world, you know, and so getting the opportunity to sit with all different types of people is just so fascinating to me. Um, but really, it's about uprooting limiting beliefs. 
at the core of the show. That's what it's kind of designed around. Um, so I do in-person interviews, but I also do a lot of solo episodes where I kind of just share my heart. It's kind of like a, a blog, but a vocal, you know, blog. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that because, like, it helps you kind of get – your your i like i for me like i'll have ideas floating in my head and i'll feel like yeah. discombobulated because of it and then just mm-hmm. recording it i don't know somehow it just like feels like i gathered it and organized it and, and like i've taken it out of my head of floating around and and i'm able to like it just relieves some, some stress and provide some clarity um when i when i talk it out so that's cool right and you know one thing that's really cool is when you're really present with people and you're talking with individuals, you know, it's funny how you don't really remember necessarily what you say because you're more focused on just speaking and talking with that individual. And so when you're in that place, it's hard for your mind to really like take notes and gather because you're just being present with another human. And yeah, so recording it gives you the opportunity to go back and be like, wow, okay, wow, yeah, that's where that went, you know, because our mind also, we kind of create our own stories too sometimes as we're in conversation. So then when we get out, we might be like, oh, that was a good conversation or, oh, that was an interesting one. And I'm, I'm curious how we got on that topic. How did we get there? And by documenting it, it gives you that opportunity to kind of reflect and be like, wow, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, that is cool. So you you're have a fascinating story story i think because you're 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 doing you have some franchisee G- gnc stores right and you're looking to get into real estate investing yes yes so i run i work with the the franchisee i'm not the franchisee i run the nashville gnc stores for him um okay he, he's not an absent owner by any stretch but i i do all of the day-to-day work for him he's um he's an older gentleman who just kind of wants to enjoy a little bit of his not necessarily retirement but you know his life a little bit more so I take on all of the business duties for him and running his franchises but I really do enjoy it um and yeah we we want to get into real estate investing and this is going to be our first year we have committed to it. My husband and I have thrown this crazy idea around for a few years, but we were driving home from um, Asheville a couple weekends ago and we're like, you know what? We need to pull the plug. We need to stop making excuses as to why we're not doing this because we've spent a lot of time thinking about it and writing up all this different stuff and, and kind of trying to be creative with it. And we're like, we're going to do it in 2020 is the year. We're going to get our first rehab property. <laughs> um, so, yeah. What's your, what's your model look like? Are you looking to buy and resell the, the property or are you looking to um, rent it out? Yeah, so we're basically going to go, I'm sure you've heard about the Burr method, buy, rehab, rent, refinance, use that to go into another property. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, so we're going to go, we're going to go with that method to start and see kind of where that takes us. And as we're in that process, see, oh, is this, is this what we like? But as we build a network around that, figuring out, you know, how we're going to actually scale and what we're going to do with it, but that's where we're going to start. Okay. So I'm assuming you've done some, some, some due diligence and you're, and you're pretty familiar at least with like some of the things I might, might talk about. Um, Yeah. So, first off, you probably know this, like, whatever they show you on, like, um, Flip or Flop or Property Brothers, like, it's not, that's, like, TV, it's for entertainment. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't really go like that. In a sense, real estate investing is, is very boring. It's, um, yeah. there's no excitement to it. It's it, at its core. I mean, if you love, like, the rehab part of it, that's, that's, like, contracting that's a different i think thing and that's okay it's it's but at its core real estate investing is just really boring it's acquiring a property um at a low enough price that you're able to either resell it after you rehab it for a profit or Mm -hmm. you're able to rent it and cash flow it um over time and then like you said you 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 pay off your loan using the the income from the renter and then you refi it and pull the cash out and you continue that process Um, and and I've been in this place before in the past too. So like if you're looking to get started the first time, you're always very excited to do something. And sometimes you forget the fundamentals and you're like, right. I just fell in love with this property. I want it to work. 
And sometimes it's, that doesn't, that's not a good idea because right. um, you might, you might acquire a property thinking like, Oh, well the, the, the property is going to acquire more value over time. Like in two years, it should appreciate. Well, we could right. have a recession next year or um, you may put a renter in there and they don't pay their rent for six months and you're, you're covering the payment yourself. And all of a sudden, like this idea that you're going to um, make money on the appreciation falls through. So you want to, you want to like really understand all of what your cost would be and your potential costs. Right. Especially when you have like your, your first only rental, like, where you get into trouble is when you have like no income coming into it. And so when you right. have, so if you had, if you had 10 houses and one person moved out, um, you have a 90% vacancy. So like you're able to, you know, weather the storm a little bit better than if you, your first one, somebody moves out, you have a hundred percent vacancy or zero percent vacancy. And so like, um, you know, it, it's all on you. So right. what, what you want to think about, is you know what is the what is the price of, of the property and then you gotta think mm -hmm. about all the other things that go into it right. you know like what are the closing costs what mm -hmm. are the costs going to be to improve the property and then what are the things that i don't know that could, could happen like there's probably you know a million things you go buy the house and you you know find out you got wood rot or you got some mold or you got a leaky faucet you, got, you know mm -hmm. you're fixing things you didn't intend to fix so you want right. to add some contingency to, to the cost of the rehab um and then when people move in again you gotta you gotta think about putting um money aside for when when the things go wrong because they, they will no matter what happens when you own rental properties every single scenario that could go wrong will in fact go wrong <laughs> right <one> right <laughs> imagine. yeah like it's just yep. crazy how you go how do people live like this because this is just absurd to me that somebody would actually live this way but somebody will you know just a million things go wrong you, you can't predict it so you got to you know kind of factor those things in um right and then you also want to make sure you're setting aside some reserves for large scale um improvements um in in, in real estate invest well in, in real estate development we call it capital expenditures which is like mm -hmm. hey in 20 years uh, your roof's not going to be any good, so you're going. You have to expect that you're going to have um, long-term maintenance costs that are very significant. So you try to bucket um, money every year in reserves for uh, a roof replacement or um, you know something that could come up, or you know replacing the HVAC or the air conditioners about something that's a little bit bigger that's just going to happen over time because that's what what happens um as right. houses get older so that those are the, like the important things to factor is is mm -hmm. really making sure like you have um contingencies on contingencies so that you don't go into a deal thinking like hey this is you know we can make it work it's skin of our teeth like that's where you mm -hmm. get yourself into trouble when when you have uh, a, a change in the in the I guess the economy or whatever it may be like a macro economy or micro economy specific to you, like that neighborhood or that, that resident. Um, yeah. if, if you, if you are very safe, your, your chances of success are better, but because you're being so safe, then a lot of opportunities that you, you might be looking at are no goes. So you're going to look yeah. at, you know, a hundred different properties before you might find 10 that have any potential. And then right. out of that 10, maybe one, maybe one is good enough that it makes sense to make a, an offer on it and, and get the property. And then you're still competing with other people that might get it too. So you might not even get that right. one. So you got to, you got to be like looking at a lot of deals, a lot of deals. And, and I would suggest like, Hey, just get started. Like just say, Hey, for six months, we're just going to look at deals. Oh, like yes. as many as we can, like go out, look at, you know, the MLS listings, look at 10 houses every day on the MLS, just run the numbers through your, your investment model and just get a feel for like, hey, I'm more familiar with the market. I'm more familiar with what things should be. And even if like a good deal comes along, you know, just kind of go, hey, we're, we're, we're being patient. Um, mm -hmm. you know, always, if you're patient, there'll always be something that will come up eventually. So yeah. 
if you're doing that, you become an expert in what you're looking at. Kind of try to stick to like things you know. Don't get out of like an area where um, you, you have no familiarity with. Like if you mm-hmm. if you know like, hey, these are where the schools are. These are where the shopping centers are. Are these are what the people do. I know people in this community. Like people want to live here. If you go, oh, but this you know town, you know, thirty miles over is a great place to live. But I don't know anybody there. I don't know anything about it. I don't know like even what the traffic's like at uh, five p.m. Like that might get yeah. you into a little bit of trouble if you're not familiar with it. So you come in very familiar with the market that you're in, and patience are are like two big key things because I think a lot of times when you want to get into investing you're like hey let's go let's do something and mm-hmm. especially right now where where the markets are pretty pretty wild they're they're everybody's you know trying to get into it how's it these prices have been going up um in like yeah. 2008 they were all going down and that would have been like hey that's when you really should have been buying like your houses for me um next door like our house was like 300,000 and that 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 we paid for it and the house next door to us was selling for like one hundred and forty thousand dollars it's like yeah that would have been like the time to buy something right. um, but like right now the house would probably sell for you know three hundred and twenty thousand, and now would not be the time to buy the house so you, you're kind of exactly in and out but but th- th- things happen so that's kind of my advice is, and that's why I say it's boring because it's like you're just constantly looking at the same thing over again, and and there's so many. It's like a no, it's a no, it's a no, yeah, it's a no. <laughs> yeah, and right. Then, maybe there's a yes, and then yes. when you finally get one, then you go through and and you do all your other stuff, and then and then of course when you're doing rehabs, um, you want to throw like. 10 to 20 percent contingency on whatever you think the estimates are going to come in or you, you should have estimates you should have contractors that can that can give you prices before you buy the house yeah um, and then just put some contingency on that so when you know things like those things that they show you in the tv shows where they go hey we ripped off the drywall and we found all these problems like yeah that right. happens, you know? oh yeah um, right right and and then when residents move out, of course, they have, you know, you might have a deposit on them, but there'll, there'll be things that, that you'll have to do, replace, you know, the carpets and stuff like that always need to, to come out because they look terrible after somebody moves out. Um, yeah. Those are important. Um, and then whatever you can do, like if you're starting out yourself, like you, you want to balance what you can do yourself and what like places your time is better spent. So, right. you know, obviously, if, if you're managing the property yourself, you're going to save um, quite a bit of money on, mm-hmm. um, you know, the management fees that somebody would charge you. But you're also the one that has to go out and collect the rent and deal with the tenant. And you have to do the repairs or find somebody to do the repairs. And if you can do the repairs, you know, then, of course, you save some money. But again, you know, hey, Saturday afternoon and you wanted to go you know, to, to the parent with your kids at the park and all of a sudden somebody's got to go fix a toilet or, you know, right. replace a leaky dishwasher that mm-hmm. wasn't expected. So those are, those are things that of course happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and not to discourage you from it. I'm just, I say, yeah. like, you know, when, when you get into trouble, real estate investing is when you under anticipate what your, all your costs are going to be. And then mm-hmm. you're, good. you're, you're struggling to, to make those out. Um, and there was one other thing I was going to make sure I said, and it's, it's, um, I can't think of it now. Oops. (laughs) (laughs) Flutter out of your brain. Well, it'll, it'll come back to you. Um, thank you. That's so helpful. You know, that's one of the biggest things that we want to be really, really prepared for is making sure that we have really not only good, do good, like due diligence, but making sure like what constitutes a good deal, right? Like in the area, you know, what are, what are the comps, you know, when you actually factor in a full rehab, what does that look like? And so I think that for us, we're trying to figure out, you know, right now in our process is like, okay, how do we make sure that we are creating a plan that can scale, but that on our first rehab property, we are able to go in and say, okay, 
this, you know, this is what needs to be done. This is what needs to be done and um, make sure that financially the deal makes sense. So do you have any advice on like what constitutes a good deal out of the normal, hey, you know, comps and rehab costs? Is there anything else in there that you can think off the top of your head that's like, oh, you should definitely make sure you have that on your walkthrough checklist? Um. Yes. So the thing I was thinking about came back to me and it's, it's something you did at is you want to, you want to look at the, the time value of money or I guess opportunity costs of like what you're investing and what you could put that in and get, you know, a similar return. So, so basically mm -hmm. um, like if you're going to put a down payment on, on your property and you, you look at what your projected, uh, net rent is mm -hmm. you know the rent you keep after income divide that by your um your investment in, mm -hmm. in it, this is, and i can i'll send, if you want to give me an email after this like i can send you like a, a quick excel sheet that just shows you the very simple formula but you want to get Love your it. cash on on cash return and depending on your market like you might think that that's a seven percent or eight percent or ten percent but that basically means like mm -hmm. Your your net income on on you know say you do, do put down twenty thousand um, dollars a a ten percent cash on uh, return on cash return would be um, sorry I'm thinking in my head it'd be like about two thousand bucks at the end of the year mm -hmm. so if you're if you're grossing two thousand bucks on twenty thousand bucks every every year. Um, that'd be about 10%. And so you'd say, is that a better deal than I could uh, put my money into, say, a, a Vanguard IRA and get, you know, 7% or 6% right. with no no risk or, or mm -hmm. a lot less risk? So then you make those decisions. So you, you want to first have a good financial model of like, hey, what, mm -hmm. what are, what is my investment criteria and what are the mm -hmm. things that are important to me? And there's a million um, like template spreadsheets you can download from the internet and some are going to be simpler and some are going to be more complex. And I would, I would just go with something simple because once you kind of just have like the basics of it, then you're right. evaluating like risk levels and tolerances between different other things. And that might not be something you want to be as complicated with. Um, but yeah. so, so once you have like, Hey, what's my, what are, what are our investment criteria? What are the risks we're willing to take on? Mm -hmm. That's established. Then you have like a hard line in the rule. If it's if it's anything less than this percent, whichever it is, you decide it, it is. Um, we're out. We're not doing it. Um, yeah. And then you stick to your guns on that. And if it is in, then you then you move into the next step. Well, what is my due diligence checklist? And those are the things like um, obviously you want to make sure that the property's title free, lien free, all that stuff. So you want to, you know, make sure you're not, you're not buying into some problem that um, somebody's going to show up on your doorstep after you close the house and be like, Hey, there's a lien on this property. You owe us $30,000 or we're going to foreclose on right. it and you lose it. You're like, I didn't plan for that. Um, yeah. So that's important. These are things like your realtor or whatever will help you with. You want to you make sure you have some, if you're going to, especially if you're going to do this like a lot, you're going to want to get partnered up with somebody that you really trust as a, as a home improvement inspector that's going to go yeah. through and check, check the boxes. But remember those people, they're not always, um, just because they check the box and everything's good. That doesn't mean that they caught everything and that mm -hmm. you won't, you're, you're going to be problem free. So you want to be very mm -hmm. due diligence on that. Like if it's cosmetic, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's easy fixes. So if you walk into a place, you go, Oh my God, the carpet's ugly and the paint's ugly and uh, the needs to countertops. That's, mm -hmm. that's the easy stuff. That's like, right. like, okay, we can figure that out. That's not hard to fix. The ones that are going to mm -hmm. get you in trouble is if like you go and you find out like, Oh, I have galvanized pipes for water in here and it, I'm going to have to do a recopper pipe or this HVAC isn't working or there's roof leaks that you can't determine and yet you, you end up, you know, spend a bunch of money fixing the roof that you weren't sure. So those are the things that are like mm -hmm. super important wood rot. Um, anything that's going to like affect the waterproofing of the building is, is going to be a huge expense that you're going to have to deal with and they're not easy to fix. So, um, right. You know, touring touring houses um, in this due diligence phase will help you kind of identify things like, oh, this would be mm -hmm. a problem. Um, yeah. Maybe 
you know, fa- find some people that are in the space on social media that do inspections. Like there's, you know, I always think of like this TV show called Homes on Homes where he like showed all the stuff that was wrong with houses. And it, I'm sure there's people that, you know, do stuff locally and, and like on social media that would, you know, if they don't, they should, but say, Hey, this is what you look for in, in a house. This is how you can tell if you got wood rot. This is what termites look like. This is what termite damage looks like. You know, so you don't just go, Oh, it's just an old piece of wood. Like, no, that's right. termites. Um, it's like your you whole know, house. <laughs> yeah. So I, I would, I'm sure there's, there's due diligence checklists that you can, you can get there. Uh, online too and you and you'll add to it it'll be an ongoing process you kind of learn some lessons in blood and and they're painful but you try not to make the same mistakes more than once um right and, and you try to mitigate things you can't you're gonna miss like you, you want to try to know everything and, and eliminate all the risk as possible but there's there'll be there'll be something you can't plan for everything and, and something will come up you didn't think about and you just add oh, it to boy. the list um so really title making sure you're not that making sure that there's not any major major infrastructure problems and unfortunately if you're in the if you're in the rehab like world and you want to get good deals like the properties that have cosmetic stuff you're going to be competing with more people because it's easier it's easier so like right you know, people that that are in that same space will go hey this is easier to do i can i mm-hmm. can make it happen or then somebody just hey i want to buy this house for myself to live in it's easy to fix more mm-hmm. competition. Now, if you go to an old mm-hmm. dilapidated house, it's got like tons and tons of problems. You're, you're going to eliminate a lot more um, potential people you're competing against for that property. So hopefully you can buy it at a better deal. Uh, yeah. But knowing you're, you're also going to have more risks of unknown expenses that, that could, could creep up. So when you, right. if you think you're going to spend $30,000 and you go up to 60, that's a huge chunk if you weren't planning on it. But if you're planning right. on 50 and um, it, the deal still works and you come in at 45, great. You, you beat your estimate and, and the deal works a little bit better for you. So it's, it's yeah. yeah, it's a lot of research. It's a lot of due diligence and, and you're going to look at a lot of things before yeah. you find one that, that works. And then as you get better at it, and do this more like it becomes faster like you can tell real quick like that's a no that's a no that's a no yeah Um, yeah and then and then and then move on so that that's kind of my take on it that's so helpful and in that space you also get to like you kind of create different systems that help you eliminate because you'll start with your initial system and like okay well then i do have to add this or add that because well that happened and i learned from that and yeah, it's really exciting. And that's one thing too about, you know, where we're at. We um we lived in Brentwood, which is right outside of Nashville. And when we bought our home, we decided to move to Columbia, Tennessee, because properties were so much more affordable. And I mean the average home in Nashville is like five hundred thousand. And so we're like, you know, we don't want to go house poor just to have a nice mm-hmm. house. So we moved yeah. about an hour out side of Nashville and there's just it's just up an up and growing um community but you're right like finding the properties that um are that make sense and are a good deal a lot of the times do need a lot of work especially because we're not we don't have crazy crazy big budgets like some of these other investments um these investment companies or people who've been doing it for a long time so we are going to kind of get the 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 lower the the big rehab properties essentially yeah but one thing that I heard that was really really great on I heard on the podcast but some guy said um when you are starting in rehab you're basically you're, you're buying other people's problems and if you're willing to fix those problems that's how you can kind of scale and create something so it's like oh that's true you go in just knowing it's going to be a lot of a lot of things a big learning curve um, and I feel like there's also that point where you can research and study. And as long as you have a checklist, um, that's great, but you, you're never going to know until you're in it. Like things are yeah. always going to come up is what I'm learning. And you just got to kind of be open to that and understand. And if you have that mindset going in like, yep, this could all, you know, <laughs> happen. It, I think it leads you a little better. It does. Like one other piece of, of thing of, factor in your model too is is when you when you buy the the house and then you're doing the rehab like you want to make sure you're factoring in the cost of like that loan that you're going to have to pay 
um, during the time between the day you close on the house till, till the first tenant moves in. And if you're doing a large extensive rehab, you know, you, you could be six months um, mm-hmm. out before that happens. And the contractor that you take by to give you an estimate, he'll say, oh yeah, this is no big deal. This is, you know, three weeks worth of work or, or you know, something like that. And then it takes six months. That happens so very often. And then all of a sudden yeah. you're like, I didn't, I didn't plan to pay uh, the, the house payment for six months. I plan to pay it for two months. And now, you know, that's 8,000 bucks. I didn't plan on spending. Um, so, so think about that. But, and then the last piece of advice, I was like, Hey, you're, you're only going to learn so much reading books and mm-hmm. um, do, you know, listen to podcasts. You have to start somewhere and you have to get experience like doing it. So just start looking at deals um, and, and you're going to learn along. Hey, what, what, what do I think about, um, real estate investing and then i tell you some some stuff like i just did now that's very high level very generic um mm-hmm. but then if you said hey i want you to talk to me about this specific investment this specific property of course the level of information is going to be different i'm going to say mm-hmm. well you know did you look at where the school is and you're kind of close to this street and it's pretty busy and um this um across the way is this like low income housing and people aren't really going to want to live there as much. And, Oh yeah, you're going to, you're going to evaluate a lot more details. So I would offer this to you. And, and if you ever have a deal come up, that you want to look at just, you could shoot me an email and just say, Hey, what do you think about this? What are the things I should look about? I'd love to, you know, help you kind of micro see you succeed um, and not make, um, learn, learn mistakes the hard way. So, be more than oh, happy to help you out along the process and you know tell you like like i don't know what um somebody might charge you for various construction work in your in your in, in your area because it's very regional construction prices are very regional but right. you know i could tell you like um he told you that would take like three months like that seems like absurd or you know right. go, go go figure out um something else oh uh, just kind of like um a rule of thumb, like I always use this as a rule of thumb, is whatever it takes in labor to do something, multiply it by three, and that should give you a roughly an idea of what it would cost with materials and profit on top of it. So if you can kind of figure out like what somebody might make an hour doing something, so like let's say a plumber is charging you like three thousand dollars to do something, and like, is that a good price or not a good price? Okay, well, think about this. What What's a plumber make? And let's say he's at 100 bucks an hour to keep the math simple. And he's going to yeah. do a, a sink replacement. And he says it's going to take, you know, um, he doesn't tell you how long it's going to take. He's like, oh, it'll take a couple of days. But you say, well, how long would I, do I think it would take me to do it? Like, could, right. could I take the sink off, put the sink back together, and... Um, and, and do it. And how long do I think that would take? Do I think that's a two day deal or three day deal or, or a, a five week deal? Well, it's probably like a day. So if I said, you know, it's, it's about eight hours times a hundred, that's 800 bucks times three to cover materials as profit, like 2,400 bucks. So 3000 might be a little bit high. It might be, you know, it might be the right price, but it might be a little high. We've kind of Mm -hmm. like done a little math, quick math in your head that just says, Hey, that's, feels right or it doesn't feel right so you can kind of back yeah. into um a, a real like comparison of some if an estimate seems high or low and if it does seem like if the guy said it was like oh it's gonna be like 400 bucks and then you go i can't even buy this stuff for 400 bucks like what does that mean like is right. he gonna rip me off or am i gonna mm-hmm. get a bad install um so that that should help you out so that's really good. That's really good. Multiplying by three. I like that because <clears throat> that's one thing that we that we don't know. Like, huh, how do you know if it's a good deal, especially as you're starting with our first property? We're going to rehab it ourselves. Um, my husband's super handy. He's a woodworker and he loves all that stuff. And so the first one outside of plumbing and electric will work and things that we cannot do. Um, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to do a lot, a lot of the work ourselves. So it's going to be kind of a labor of love for sure. Um, and also like that, 
that you said to make sure you put in the cost of the loan before, like yeah. and, and put that in. That's really important too. I, I wrote that down because that will be really, yeah. really helpful. But if you do the work yourself, even if you don't pay yourself to do it, make sure you like at least factor that in because that that's, that's something like, you like if you if you put in you know a hundred hours worth of work that's a hundred hours worth of something else you could have done you know yeah. and maybe the hundred hours worth of work you could have made um widgets and sold them on etsy and and made more money doing that than than rehabbing it so you want to at least factor in because you you know a lot of times you'll go like oh well this guy wants to charge me five thousand but I, because we're going to do it our own ourselves it's only going to cost us two thousand but Right. You're, yeah, you're saving that money, but at least in your evaluation, you should you should consider like, hey, what 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 or what I should pay myself for those hours, because it's all part of that investment too, you know. And yeah. there will come a time where you'll be too busy. You got so you have like a hundred properties, like you can't do a mm-hmm. hundred yourself. You're gonna have to hire oh, people. No, of course not. Oh, your for deals sure. don't work because you're you're mm-hmm. doing evaluations where you weren't paying for labor, and now you are. So, uh, oh, of course. Just, oh gosh, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Um, I couldn't. Yeah, we're, we would only do that for our first our first property <laughs> property probably as we build a network of people because we just we don't know enough people in that space. Um, so that's kind of our intention. Yeah. So. You'll you'll meet a ton of people. Like you'll your your learning curve will be fast and furious. You're gonna you're, it'll be a fun t- 2020 for you y'all doing this, and I'm I'm excited for you. That's that's a lot of fun. And you know, as you get bigger and you have more properties, and you go from you know single family houses to like a 20 unit apartment or a 200 yeah. unit apartment, like that's the the fun the fundamentals at the very root of it, the investment mm-hmm. analysis. It, it it stays pretty much the same. It's just at scale, yeah, yeah. and you're you're evaluating yeah. risk to what you what you're t- comfortable with, and then after that, it's just you know having contractors that can handle larger projects and stuff like that. So right. it's it's wow. fun. You're you're gonna do great. I'm really excited. I, thank you so much for sharing all of that with me. It really means a lot that to take time out of your day to to talk to a newbie like me. Um, <clears throat> what so to to do a quick turn how can is there anything i can do for you with your podcast any questions you have um no i think i think this conversation was really excellent i like the way it started off we actually kind of talked about the podcast a little bit and talked about like yeah. things we're doing and the importance of networking right. so i feel like we covered um a lot of the things that like i was interested in and in talking with people on my podcast about so we got that and then i think we had a really good conversation about, you know, what real estate investing might be like and, and some other people might find, um, ad, ad, you know, value in that. And, and okay. hopefully, you know, that you, this is something maybe you can refer back to and, uh, yeah. you know, look back and say, oh, yeah, like we looked at that and that saved us some money because we didn't get caught with our pants down. Yeah, no, definitely. It's going to be <laughs> super helpful. Um so I really, really do appreciate it. And you, um, you let me know if there's any way that I can help you in your process as well. Cause I really do. I really appreciate your time and yeah, it's great to have met you yeah. and to network and yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Just stay in touch and feel free no matter what, shoot me an email. Even if it's like, we never talked again for like two years you go, <laughs> Hey, I had a question. Like, like just because like a lot of times it's in the past doesn't mean like you can't reach out and say hi and if you and please don't wait two years either like i'd love to hear from you like two minutes like oh we just looked at something and what do you think about it so please oh, feel free to reach out it. anytime and um i'm glad i was able to connect with you and uh, hope you enjoyed the rest of your saturday Thank you so much. And yes, oh, I so appreciate it. And same for you. Enjoy your time at home and and getting all that stuff done this weekend. And we'll definitely stay in touch and I'll talk to you sometime soon. All right. Fantastic. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Make sure to visit our website, therealnatepayo.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes so you'll never miss an episode of All In. While you're at it, if you found value, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if simply tell two friends about the show. Looking to connect? You can find Nate Payo on LinkedIn or Instagram.